Sorry, it's a little bit messy here, but uh, is that clear? Yes, Prof. Good, good, good. That's always, you always ask, ask a question in every class. So, any more questions to the chat regarding this problem? Um, Prof, I just want to ask, when we work with the Nelson diagram, when it comes to occupancy, um, does every um, level have like two particles right. only that can go there? Right, right, right. Only two particles because remember the occupancy of the phi half is 2j plus 1, right? Where phi half is j. So 2j plus 1 will be uh, 5 plus 1, 6. Right, this guy we have uh, an occupancy of six, but we have divided the occupancy, I mean the the level, into three. Right, so each one must come with two particles. The same thing here, two particles here. The same thing. Each one will have two particles. So we always uh, add up two uh, two particles per orbital, and we start with two here. One, two here. Four, six, eight. This is the eight. And then we have uh, 10, 12. Let um, me see. Uh, eight, 10, yeah. 12, 14, 16. You see, there's a little gap here on 16, which uh, sometimes is also called a, a semi magic nucleus. It's not as big as this one. 16, uh, 18, and 20. And here is very important for you to understand that the gap at 20 is right there. But as we move uh, to a larger deformation, this gap basically vanishes, right? Now here, there's no gap. So the same thing happened here, right? And so on and so forth. You always, I, I, I'm giving you a very clear, easy example of neon 21. But I could have asked you for something with 70 something, right? Particles. So you can go there. And go here okay i'm not going to tell you whether it is for neutrons or for protons you can take any of these and if you want to go to six, say 60 and uh, assume a deformation of 0.1 so this is 50 always 50 is marked here so 50 52 54 56 58 60 right depends where you put it the where you draw your vertical line right Depends where you draw the vertical line. This guy will come below this fellow. Uh, you go to this vertical line. This guy will become be before this fellow. So obviously the, the formation it must be a given. So the first thing you do is, okay, I give you a oplate deformation. You have to go here, right? And draw a line, zero minus 0 0.2 right there. If I give you 0 0.2, you guys go here, right? I'm always, always shocky in, in, in twos, right? All right, thanks, Prof. So that's how the Nelson diagram was actually structured in such a way that each level will always take two particles. Always will take two particles. And the solution and the, the, the why of that comes in the next question. So the, the why of that comes on the orientation of the different orbits, right? So let's go back to our board. And uh, let's create a, yeah, a new one. So so here we go. So as I uh, we have mentioned many times, we, we let's let's draw the actually the. Let me remove this thing from here. Uh, let me go to this one, uh, let me change the color, something light, and then uh, let's draw our quadruple, our rugby ball here. So this is basically the, the nucleus, which has a, a prolate shape. And uh, So now we are going to uh, illustrate the possibility 
let's make something red. So we have a particle. Uh, we let's say um, let's say we have a J. Like the one, uh, like the we call it the one D phi half. Basically, that will be a J equal always phi half, and there will be an MJ, a magnetic substate, is called of plus minus phi half, uh, plus minus uh, three half, and plus minus. This is what we dealt with in class, but can be can be J equal two, and then MJ. Let's call it two. Let's go for two today. Plus minus two, plus minus one. And zero, right? So, what happens if you have a, a let's call this our symmetry axis here? Let's go around here, and uh, we are going to have a particle uh, with j equal to. So now we're going to go to a different column. So we have a particle with j equal to. Uh, j equal to and mj equal to basically mj give us the projection on the axis of that particle so that particle will go here and we orbit that uh, nucleus in such a way right but there will also be a j coming down a j equal to mj equal minus two right so there will be another vector here so this is why in this particular case, the, the J phi half is J phi half, but you have plus minus phi half. So you have two particles, the, the one orbiting this way and the other particle orbiting this way, right? So basically we have different MJs and we obey the Pauli principle, right? So we have, we can have for each, each orientation, we can only have two particles for each uh, orientation, we can only have two particles, right? Now comes the solution to the problem that we were discussing, problem six. So imagine that there is no projection. So J, let's say let's 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 go with this um, let's go with this case. So now we have J plus minus two, right? J MJ uh, plus two, and J minus two pointing down, going this way. So now we have another possibility, which is J equal to. So we have a J equal to, yeah. J equal to, but mj equal plus one so then this particle will rotate like this right the same j the same orbit remember these are the same uh the same orbit although this may look a little bit smaller but basically rotation of this particle going this way but also we may have the rotation of this particle going the other way with again uh, a j equal to and mj equal minus one. Where well, mj is the projection here, right? Is giving us one and here is giving us minus one. So this was plus minus two, minus two here, this is minus one. This is uh, plus one or so it doesn't look like, and this is plus, right? Now the final, the final one will be will be this guy going j equal to um, mj equal to zero. So there's no projection, so there will be a particle. Basically, we rotate like this, right, around the nucleus. So the j will come here, j equal to, but mj will be equal to zero because there's no projection onto the z axis right so now the question is which particle which uh, which orientation 
will be more bound. Particle going like this, particle going like this, or particle going like this. Guys? No, the, the, the more bound one is the one is more closer to the to the, to the, plug. To the nucleus, right? Because it's a J equal to two. J, J is always equal to two. J is always equal to two. Yeah, but okay. The orientation is for so get so safe. So the, the 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 orientation that one is more closer to the nucleus. The, that's that's the more bound one. For this one, right? Yes. For m j equal to zero, there's no projection on the z axis, right? Because the uh, the the particle is orbiting like this, so yes. the angular momentum goes that way. So as there is no projection, the m j is equal to zero. And as we know, the, the nuclear force has a short range, which means that the closer we are to the, to the nucleus, right? This particle will be more bound. And this is the effect, effect that we see in the Nielsen diagram, right? Well, you see, you see this, uh, this uh, we can go to any, any particle, Actually, look at this, this fellow here. This nine half goes all the way up and the one half goes all the way down. So I want you guys to, to draw this yourself and explain why this orbital comes down, the one half, this is the one half four four zero comes down here. When the shape is prolate and the nine half goes up. But when the shape is oblate, like a lentil, the other thing happens, right? The other way around, the nine half goes all the way down, becomes more bound than the one half plus, right? Is this clear? Basically, do you have two ingredients here? Is the, the, the short range of the nuclear force, the closer you are to the nucleus, depending on the orientation of the particle orbiting the nucleus, that close uh, rotation or close orbit around the nucleus will give more bind binding energy. The particle will be more bound than the one which is as a bigger uh, gap, right? As a, like we saw in this particular case. So this particle here, this particle here obviously uh, will be less, uh, this one will be less bound because it goes orbits around the nucleus and the nucleus is far away, right? There's all this gap there. But for this fellow, it's very close to the to the to the core, to the nuclear, to the nucleus itself, right? Guys, is this clear? It's a very fundamental, and at the end of the day is for you very easy to understand this seemingly complicated uh, diagram, right? Which now you can understand much better. Obviously there's some, uh, some additional factors like the spin orbit interaction and the L square, but uh, those ones, uh, they're also playing a role, but I want you to explain this qualitatively. You know, what is the, what is the behavior of these lines going up and down and why here they go up and here they go down, right? So basically that's what I wanted you to tell me in question six. I didn't want you to tell me the story of the Nielsen model. You know, that can be Google, can, you can copy and paste here. Yeah, I'm not going to, to give any marks. You can explain. So I, I, like, I like your explanation. I like to see that you have your own, uh, with your own words, you're explaining things. This is a, a plus in the, in the, in the question. But I want to mark what I ask, I ask for, right? I ask for, in particular, I want you to explain why the single particle orbits in the Nielsen diagram present such a seemingly complicated behavior, moving up and down as a function of the formation, right? These very few of you did it. Uh, I hope 
if the if in the final exam you can actually understand this much better so questions here uh prof yep uh i have a question about the nelson diagram and when the energy levels overlap each other right right so at that point is it only two neutrons or protons that occupy that energy level when they overlap or is it a multiple of like if right, three right, right. In, in principle in principle they cannot they, they cannot really cross this is not uh, a uh this is just uh, uh the drawing i mean these guys don't cross but then you have this so you have to be very careful i won't give you a problem which is too complicated like right right here right right here you have you know two particles yeah. will be here two particles there are four so they will have two four six eight in this little corner here right so i won't give, i won't give you such a complicated uh I, if I, if i give you the formation i will give you something which you can count easily you know go up you know, okay. and always remember that this is a spherical case. The spherical case is easy to remember. Right? Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I and all, also, also 28. You have two particles here on the 28. Just when you have this level, it's a good reference to say, okay, here we have 28. Yeah. So I, I, I start. I start counting from here, right? 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, yeah. 40, 42. You know. Okay, yeah. Okay, I get it. Thank you. So, any more questions? This is how I want you to do the test. Always, you know, explain first thing you can add if you want to. Although it's not necessary, but if you want to, you can explain the Nielsen model with your own words. I want you to, to, to understand that, you know, there's not a copy paste from any book, from any web page. And then explain what is not really in the web page. You know, the understanding of the Nielsen model by, by yourself, right? So, and now, actually, I want you to encourage to encourage yourself to uh, do lots of uh, this is your only friend i told you many times so i want you to have a little competition or ask to have a little competition here where uh, let's call it um, let's call it Let's call it a, um, I want basically to see your being every day full, right? So we're going to have an Einstein uh, Einstein uh, being competition where you are going to send me your picks, the best picks of your bucket being full. I want to see the work that you put into this. Um, I want you to focus on that. I want you to focus on work. And don't uh, and forget about the marks. Let's focus on understanding. So our approach will be the following. Uh, Craig is now giving you the tutorial. But our approach will be the following. We're going to have a, a test on um, on Thursday, 9 to 1, right? After that test, I prepare a bunch of questions, a pool of many questions. So where I'm going to allow that you do free quizzes, you know, you, every time you do a quiz, you can go to the Canva and you're going to have a different quiz because everything is randomized. The questions that you're going to have this Thursday also they are randomized, so each one will have a different question. So we are applying Icamba, but the good thing is that I'm going to leave the quizzes open, and there are many conceptual questions where you're going to get immediate feedback. 
So if you do something wrong, you're going to get it right, right? Until you figure out what is the right solution. So they're going to be, a, most of them, there will be multiple choice and there will be questions for your uh, understanding of the subject. This doesn't mean that those questions will be in the final exam, right? In the final exam will be more like a, uh, uh, you do calculations there, but these, uh, these questions will be very useful for you to understand the subject and to get the concepts uh, right. So I want you to send me pics, any pictures you take, your own pictures of the bin full of paper, and the winners will be uh, rewarded with some nice uh, physics books, and we'll see uh, some nice books or some training in, uh, in Mandela in the Modern African Nuclear Detector Laboratory, a special training for you guys. So let's, uh, I want to see the work, right? The, the, the more papers, the better. This is Einstein's say, it's not my say, right? It's your, your uh, best 